Now, going back to your scientific method, which is our topic today, we're done with observation, question, hypothesis, and experiment. Now, we're down to the last two parts, which are, of course, your analysis and conclusion. Now, going to your analysis, you know that whenever you have your experiment, you'd always be gathering your data. When you say data, these are factual information collected from an experiment. Okay, so these are some pieces of information that you collect from your experiment. You call that your data. Now, there are several ways, two ways through which you can present your data. The first one would be using a table. That's your tabular, uh, tabular presentation. Or you can also use your graphical presentation or what you call the use of graphs. We said that there are four different types of graphs and each of this has their own specific use, okay? So you have your line graph, the bar graph, picture, picture graph or pictograph, and the circle graph or pie chart, okay? For your line graph, this is used for showing change or trend over a period of time, okay? So example here, you have the number of people in a store and the temperature in the different days of the week, okay? On the different days of the week. So again, whenever you have a line graph, this is used for showing change or trend. Now, whenever you have a line graph, of course, um, in science, also in your math, you know that there are two axes here that you need to write or you need to draw. You start with your x-axis. That's going to be your horizontal axis. Then, of course, you have your vertical axis, which you call your y-axis. Now, if you are looking at your variables, your independent variable and your dependent variable, you need to remember that your independent variable is the one that you plot in your x-axis, okay? X-axis should have your independent variable. So usually time is your independent variable since, of course, we cannot control time, okay? So your time usually can be found on the x-axis because it's, it's usually going to be your independent variable. Dependent variable, again, would be found on the y-axis of your line graph. Now, the second type of graph that we have here is your bar graph. So your bar graph here functions to compare your different choices. So again, your bar graph is used for showing a comparison between choices. So say your example here, what kind of pet do you own? You have the different choices, rabbit, dog, cat, goldfish, and hamster. And you have the different number of people that owns a certain type of pet. Now you have the number of students, of course, you have the choices here. So again, your bar graph is used for showing a comparison between the different choices, different criteria, different genre. If you're talking about music, for example, or talking about movies. Now there is a special type of bar graph, which you call a histogram. Okay, this is a special type of bar graph where the bars are touching each other. Okay, there is no space between bars and you'd call this type of bar graph your histogram, okay? So again, this is a histogram, special type of bar graph where the bars are touching each other, okay? No space between the bars. Now we go to the third type of graph that we have. This is your pictograph. And this is a type of graph that shows data of a population and it's gonna be using different picture symbols, okay? Now, whenever you see a question, your EOC test about your pictograph, you should check the key, okay? Always check the key or the legend. There's always a key or the legend there. It says here, for example, that one drop equals five people. So say the question is, how many people have uh, type AB blood, type AB? Okay, and so your answer should be 10 people because, of course, each blood or each drop is equal to five people. So that's two multiplied by five, giving you 10. Okay, so make sure that you are checking the legend or that you are checking the key whenever you have a pictograph and your test asks you to interpret your pictograph. All right, so that's your pictograph. Okay, now the last type of graph, of course, is your circle graph, also called the pie chart. And this is used to show the relationship of a part to the whole. Again, your circle graph or your pie chart shows the relationship of a part to the whole. Now, whenever you'd have to, to compute the percentage, you need to get the number divided by the total. And of course, the quotient of this, you multiply by 100. Okay, so the number divided by the total, the quotient, the quotient of this uh, problem here, you multiply by 100, and that's how you get the percentage. Okay, so again, your circle graph or your pie chart is used to show the relationship of a part to the whole. 